In this exercise, we will explore the Arguments object in JavaScript, which enables us to create special functions that can intake an undetermined amount of arguments. All of the functions that we write have an Arguments object tied to them that we can access. You can get an example.html file ready, and we'll just create a function. Let's name it do something. Open close parentheses, opening curly brace, and closing curly brace. And let's make this function intake a string argument. So what we'll do in that function, just for testing purposes, is alert ourselves this string of text. Now let's make that function execute. And let's pass a string argument or a string parameter to that function. So this is what a normal function that you would write might look like. So let's run that in our favorite browser. So we get the alert string argument, hello. Instead of accessing this as the variable string, we can just type in arguments and in between brackets, we can put the index number that we want to access for the arguments list. And in this case, we only have one argument coming into this function. So now let's run that and see if we still get the, the string output. The string hello is still output. So you can see that we're accessing the arguments object. And you can also write this like this. You can write do something dot arguments and then the index that you want. And you see this gives you the same result. Okay. And you can also, since everything is a descendant of the window object, you can just type in window dot do something arguments blah blah blah. And you get the same result. And similar syntax could be in between brackets. You can make that a string. And this syntax also works. If you remove this dot, let's see. Yep. But really all you have to do is type in arguments and then put the index number that you want. So let me change this output in this alert and I'm going to put another string. So let's put string one for that variable and then string two for the second variable. Now we can output both arguments plus double quote, double quote, plus arguments one, which will give us the second one in the list. So we'll just put a space here. Now what we can do is add the second string, the second parameter. So run that in our browser and we get the string hello world. That's because we picked up both arguments using the arguments object and we access the list item that we want within that object. Now we're going to take a look at the length property. So what we can do is just alert arguments dot length property and we should get two. See, we get a two. That's because there are two items in that object and it's not an array. This arguments object is not an array object. It's a instance of an object object. That means we can also iterate over the length of that object. So let's just grab that and we'll make a for loop. For, open close parentheses, opening curly brace and closing curly brace. Say var i is equal to zero as long as i is less than arguments.length we're going to i plus plus. So now this for loop is set up to iterate over the length of the arguments object you can see we have two arguments. Now we'll just alert ourselves the arguments i index as they pass through the loop. Let's check that. Hello and world. So we got both arguments. Now using the arguments object, we don't even have to declare these variables for the parameters being passed as arguments to the function. We can just remove them altogether, but we're still going to get access to them. See, hello and world. Now we can just add an undetermined amount of variables. Let's put another word, goodbye. Let's add a number, 100. Let's add a Boolean value. Now let's go ahead and run that. Hello, world, goodbye, 100, and true. All of those arguments got passed through the do something function and processed in it without us having to declare it between the parentheses.
we don't have to declare the individual variables. We can just scoop up the arguments object and dynamically iterate over it. Now they can also be assigned within the function. So if for any reason that you wanted to change the first argument, the first string argument coming in, its value to something other than what's being passed, so we can make it poop. So this is just how you assign values if you ever have the need to any of those incoming arguments. See? Poop. It's the first one. And there's also just one more property associated with the arguments object. We'll just alert ourselves for testing purposes. The arguments dot call e property. And what that does is it returns the function that the arguments object is associated with. It's the function do something. So it only has the length property and the call e property. And I think in the future it's going to have a caller property. So we can also write functions that would compute numbers or do some kind of math according to an undetermined amount of arguments or parameters being passed to the function. So you can see this function sum is just going to add up all of the arguments that are passed, all of the number arguments that are passed through the function. So this should give us a 10, 7, 20, and 30. That should give us a 30. See, all of those numbers have been computed inside of the function. So as you can see, the arguments object allows us to create functions that can take in a variable amount of arguments, an undetermined amount of arguments, and process all of them. And the arguments object is an instance of an object object. If we go back to our original function, and let's just alert ourselves, type of arguments, that'll show us the type of object that the arguments object is. And it's an object object. You can also look at its constructor function, dot constructor, and that'll show you exactly what it is. It's a function object constructor, so it's an object object. So it's not an array. If that was an array, we, we would have seen a type of array and the array constructor, but it's an object object. And that's all there is to it. I'll see you in the next exercise.